Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fabulous, incredible, up and down jumping edition of Great Scott. I'm Scotty B, and thanks for watching. So, today I wrap up my discussion of Batman v Superman. The final thing I wanted to talk about in the movie is what I consider to be the issues that I had in any movie, no matter what you feel about it, is going to have its issues. Civil War was the greatest thing since sliced caterpillar eggs, according to most comic book fans, but it still had its issues. Schindler's List is one of the greatest movies of all time, and it's still, I'm sure, if broken down, would have its issues and there are things that you go well for dramatic purpose they do this so it depends on what they want to do dramatically and some of the dramatic beats in this movie were decided upon and then they went and did them regardless of whether it made a logical sense or not for me the first thing that really stands out is martha 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 not because of the memes not because it doesn't make sense that batman would realize the error of his ways i think it's very clear to anyone who wants it to be the reason why Batman suddenly changed his stance. There's absolutely no reason in the movie the way it is presented that we should believe that Superman wouldn't have quickly gone after his mother and then went after the ship. He doesn't know there's a doomsday. He doesn't know the world's in danger. He doesn't know there's any actual issue. Yes, the city is losing power. Yes, Batman says, you gotta go over there. I'll get your mother. And he just agrees. And I don't know that Superman would ever say, you know what? You're right, I'm gonna leave Martha to you, a guy dressed as a bat. None of us know where she is, but somehow you're gonna be able to find her quicker than I, who has every type of vision that's ever been thought of in the history of man, and every type of hearing, and so I could just listen for a second and probably hear Martha's heartbeat. Or I could go above the earth and look at Metropolis for two seconds, scan every building, and see either the one that was lined with lead, which they never say in the movie, or the one she's actually sitting in. Before he even battles Batman, he should have just went, got Martha back by doing the thing above the earth or listening or whatever. We're meant to believe that he can't do that or uh, he doesn't have the time to do that or because Lex said that if Superman gets involved, he's going to tell his guys to kill her. Did he say uh, if anybody else gets involved, it's fine? Did he say, but if you send a guy in a bat suit and he kills all my men and then takes Martha out of there, I'm just going to stand there and say, wow, he's very impressive. Uh, no, uh, it would make sense that as soon as Batman breaks in there, they shoot Martha, and then Batman kills everybody, but Martha's already dead. The fact that they wait is incumbent on us again to say, well, the guy's probably afraid for his life, so he waits in case he can use Martha, and he does. When Batman comes in, he has a flamethrower, I'll kill her, and Batman is able to, which he probably wouldn't be, but again, a comic book thing, we let that go, is able to save her and block the flames and, and not get his face burned or anything. So once we're meant to believe that Superman doesn't do that, now we're in a situation where he could have just saved Martha, never battled with Batman to begin with, and then gone over to the ship. By the time he saved Martha, Lex would have been over there with Doomsday, and the whole Doomsday thing could have started. Batman still could have shown up and leapt out of the way for a while, while Wonder Woman tried to subdue Doomsday, and Superman eventually killed him. Have Doomsday break out before they decide that Batman's going to go after Martha. I gotta go save my mother. Boom! Rah! He jumps in, grabs Superman, and they're battling. And while they're battling, Superman says, You have to save Martha! Like he did when he was on the ground. And Batman jumps into action. Would have been more heroic for Batman. Would have been more heroic for Superman. Would have made more sense. And we're given kind of a flimsy reason as to why Batman can get there so quickly. But it's also out of order because Batman is a man in a jet that is in a city, in the confines of a city. It's not like you can use the jet to go as fast as possible to get to a point where she's at. You have to kind of maneuver around. So the fact that we see Batman rescue Martha first, and then we see Superman fly, you know, essentially five feet across the bay to get to where the ship is, where there might be a problem, I think is, is poor editing. We should have seen Superman go over there first and seen Doomsday break out first. Meanwhile, we we, in our minds, know that Batman is going around trying to find Martha, and then Alfred comes through and says that he has a grouping of men with guns, which is not any definite indication that that is where Martha is, but he finds something that matches what he thinks is Martha. Batman goes there, they happen to be correct. If they would have just switched the order, 
started the Doomsday fight before they even decided for Batman to go to Martha, it would fix everything. But now we didn't do that. So now if they would have had Superman say, you're right, I got to go, boom, go over there, start the battle with Lex and Doomsday. Then we see when, when Superman's floating in space from the nuclear missile, then cut to Batman, it would have been better. It would have flowed better and it would have made more sense because Batman gets that done before Superman even has the first word of his conversation with Lex. Now, I know that in movies, the idea a lot of times is, meanwhile, this is going on while Batman is saving Martha, but it's a little disjointed and you kind of get the idea that Batman already got to where Martha is before Superman, and I get it, he probably didn't, it was happening uh, simultaneously, although I also think it would have taken Batman longer to get to that point than it took Superman to get across the bay. That, I think, is the uh, it's the major plot beat in the movie because it makes Superman and Batman allies. It makes Batman realize that he was wrong all along, and it, and it changes the tone of the movie from that point forward. It's near the end, so we don't see it that long, but they're going to eventually be allies and friends, and no, it's not because her name is Martha. Next, and many people have talked about this, is the bullet scene, the scene where terrorists have Lois Lane and Superman comes and saves her but before that happens a bunch of people are murdered with guns by mercenaries who were sent there by Lex Corp because he's setting up the whole thing Lex to slander Superman's name and the thing is is that when they show the African lady in court saying how he came from the sky and there were so many people dead and we're so afraid of him and it's so terrible the implication seems to be that because of Superman these people were gunned down in cold blood no one says why didn't he come before those people were killed? Why didn't he arrive and stop everyone from being killed? He, they just kind of indicate that because of him, they're all dead. And I don't know if that means that Lex thought that people would think that people gunned down by machine guns were the doing of Superman, or if he just wanted to go badly so that people could say, see, every time Superman's involved. But if Superman wasn't involved, all those people and one more would be dead. So... The fact that he showed up still saved that one person and got one terrorist in jail. People say there's no way he could have survived, and maybe that's the case. We don't see that either. I look at it as Superman isn't going around killing human beings, so he has a way to make sure that his arms are behind the guy, the wall breaks by Superman's strength, and the man is, is probably knocked unconscious and maybe even has some bruised ribs. But Superman, this that whole thing with whether he can catch you when you're falling or not, if he has to slow down, and, and they've never really covered that. Uh, but we have to go by that, otherwise every time he catches a person from, falling from a building, every time he catches Lois, all of those things, they would just break in half because they're going so fast and he's a, an object stopped. Uh, or he has to go by in such a way that he has to calculate the movement and the motion. And the, or he just has an instinctual sense of, of how to move when he's flying so that he doesn't do that and it doesn't necessarily need to be covered. It's that Those types of things are the suspension of disbelief, not necessarily world-breaking like uh, when when people don't act logically or when reality is changed in a way that makes no sense and you could argue that having a man who flies with a cape is changing reality in a way that doesn't make sense but that is a construct that we know going in but then everyone else in the world around should kind of relate in a unless you're making a totally completely whimsical world that doesn't have real people in it like Star Wars or something where you, things don't have to make logical Earth sense, but Superman's on Earth, so those types of things are the things that stand out. But the biggest thing that is kind of an elephant on our back is the idea that